we do want to acknowledge that um, our rating isn't just looking at the economy, right? I think, as you rightly said, we also take a view on the fiscals, but we also take a view on perhaps some of the areas that we will be talking about, such yeah. as uh, the, the government's uh, uh, policy effectiveness, as well as things like political risk and external vulnerability. But I guess to the general point, and I think of much interest to um, the public, is um, the point that, uh, that the Indian economy is actually doing very well. And we have acknowledged that. Uh, I think part of the reason why we have affirmed the BAA3 rating is that is the view that India has emerged from the pandemic in a stronger position than what than when it had entered into uh, the pandemic. So that's the first point. But amidst uh, amidst that sort of context, that background, yeah. we have, indeed, as you had mentioned, seen um, a degree of fiscal consolidation from pandemic era settings. But when you look at uh, that, uh, the government's balance sheet, and when you look at the fiscal deficit, it still remains wide compared to historical levels. Mm -hmm. um, it remains wide compared to other peers rated in uh, rated around the BAA3 or uh, the BAA space. So uh, other emerging markets like the Philippines or Indonesia uh, or Colombia. So um, I think the way we you would we would want to sort of look at this uh, from a, a big picture perspective is that the strengths, the gains in in uh, in the economy. Um, given the outperformance of the Indian economy in this sort of very uh, sort of cloudy, very uncertain global economic outlook have been outweighed by still limited gains in terms of improvements on the fiscal side.